Hey, what's happening out there? This is Halftime Prep Talk. The summer football practice edition, Matt. Matt yeah. Sparks, Aaron Snyder, we're back at you. And you know, we're gonna be taking another little bit of a break, but we wanted to remind you guys that we are still around. We're still working a little bit. Yes. Hashtag HTPT on Twitter. You can follow updates throughout the season about the show, follow updates about the season. We're excited for it. You know, this is a great football weather, of course. Um, in July, 85 degrees, 90% 90 humidity. Get lucky if I can make it to the show without dehydrating. I just wanted to warn you ahead of time. <laughs> well, we're here at uh, Ashland Blazers baseball field where in the outfield they practice football. And uh, they're in, in the background right now, Coach Love and, and, and Coach Dowdy and guys, they're really getting their, uh, their men together. They, they seem to be excited for the season. Yeah, this is quite a scene here. You know, we have spectators here watching practice. I mean, you get no better tradition here than Ashland football, so. And their opening night is August 29th. Um, that'll be against Raceland, uh, I believe. So, actually, I think it's the 28th. I'm yes. gonna be a uh, day off on that. But uh, we are 30 days away from opening night of the season in the area, northeastern Kentucky. And, you know, some of the matchups, we'll be getting into all that with when the football preview is issued out the week of the season. Make sure you get your hands on that. We put a lot of time and effort into that, and we do it for you fans out there to inform you guys about what's going on, what happened in the off season. Let's touch on a couple things that happened throughout the off season, Matt. First of all, the guy who's gained so much attention and uh, just so much positive feedback from, from colleges and things like that is Cash Daniel, who is now committed to Kentucky, the Paintsville linebacker, 6'3", 230. He's a man out there. Yeah, it's an amazing story that like two years ago, no one knew who he was, especially in the college ranks. He goes to a prestigious camp, dominates there, just got everybody's eyes open wide, and now he's going to be playing in Commonwealth Stadium. And right here at Ashland, Quentin Baker has committed to Marshall, the electrifying running back, uh, the elusive, shifty runner, and he also really has excelled on the defensive side starting last year mm -hmm. as a safety and you know played a little secondary back there as safety in the corner he, he was really uh you know no matter where you put him on the football field on the track he's going to excel isn't he yeah he's he's probably one of the more elusive and probably more athletic backs we've seen in quite some time he's not here today at practice but i'm wearing the uh, marshall hat at the, you know as a homage to quentin you know i went to marshall i'm not trying to be biased or anything but uh I'm glad, he, I'm glad he committed to the herd. Yeah, Quentin had a mandatory meeting. That's why he's not here to practice this morning. Um, but, you know, uh, another teammate of his, Drew O'Brien, gaining some attention as well. Uh, Drew O'Brien plays linebacker. He plays tight end and a little bit of line for Ashland. And uh, he's going to go to Western Kentucky. Yeah, a, a big, a big uh, pick for the Hilltoppers. Uh, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, they, they might uh, face each other. They might face each other one time, you know, Drew and Quentin are teammates, but now let's see if Drew can tackle Quentin when they meet uh, in the college ranks. <laughs> yeah, we might have to ask Drew about that. Yeah. Uh, we talked to several coaches this morning. We've been on our annual uh, four down territory tour, which is not complete yet. This is Monday. You will be seeing this probably on Wednesday as, as, as this is taped. But uh, Matt and I, we went to Greenup County this morning, Fairview here at Ashland now, and he's going to Raceland later. Uh, this is always a, every year we get together and, uh, and come up with but something we can, uh, you know, just to get people excited again, get back in football mode here in the middle of July. It's hot out here, but uh, we're surviving today. Yeah, we had an early wake up call, you know, sports writers, you know, don't really function too well in the morning, but uh, <laughs> it's pretty exciting to have a chance to get up and go watch some football. It's already July again, it just seems like you blinked and now football season here again. I had my energy drink this morning, the V8 energy drink, and then I had... Uh, yeah, then you had coffee though. I mean, it's 90 degrees out here and you're drinking scalding hot coffee. I don't <laughs> know if that's a wise decision or not. <laughs> Gotta have my coffee in the morning, all right? <laughs> okay. Yeah, hey, I even talked to Rex Cooksey over at Fairview. Yeah. He said he has to have his coffee too. If Rex Cooksey drinks coffee, yeah. I'm drinking coffee. Exactly Nothing right. wrong with that. No, Rex yeah. is back on the sidelines this year as a defensive coordinator for Fairview. It's pretty interesting. Yeah, you know, Rex, this thing has coached every uh, sport over Fairview. I mean, there's no better coach to have at Fairview than Rex Coastie. I think if Fairview had a badminton team, he probably would coach it too. But he's been around the block. We won't say how many years, of course, but he's a great guy and a great coach. Well, once again, you're watching HTPT, which is sponsored by Fan and Automotive Family. So check out our Chick-fil-A ticker. As you can see, some of the opening games 
uh, for teams around the area. Uh, you know, we just, uh, you know, I completed my Cat's Paws preview about a couple months ago. And, uh, you know, even though it's a little outdated, I still will stand by my predictions there. I like Johnson Central in the district here with Ashland Class 4A. I think Johnson Central, Ashland, and then maybe Greenup, who we talked to this morning, I think they might bump out round. Well, we well, have a new alignment, of course, that this year in high school football. We have a six-team district now in 3A and 4A. And I think, I think Greenup has a great shot to be that third team in that district. That six-team district, of course, in 3A involves Russell, who I think has to be the favorite going into the season uh, based on what they accomplished last season. And, and you know, T.J. Maynard has, uh, has really gotten things rolling rather quickly there. Uh, to follow a, a legendary coach like Ivan McGlone, uh, that's tough to do. And, and then, uh, you know, the, the three-team district there in Class A, uh, you have Paintsville, Raceland, and Fairview. I like Raceland once again. They're the two-time defending region champions for a reason. Yeah, we, I think you got to circle that game in, uh, in Johnson County in Paintsville. Uh, End of October, Raceland at Paintsville. Been a little bit chatter on social media so far. I think that'd be a game to watch if you're one of Pencil One this season. Um, you know, right here at Ashland, uh, here in the past week, some sad news. Uh, over the weekend, uh, Dirk Payne, Mr. Tomcat, they call him, and he deserved that name. Uh, Miss, Mr. Tomcat passed away at the age of 70. So uh, I know everybody around here will sorely miss Dirk and just his presence at the games. He was always here. Uh, of course, the owner of Ashland Sporting Goods, uh, just, a, just crazed about his Tomcats, craved Tomcats. And anytime you're at a basketball game, football game especially, you might see him in the booth with Dickie Martin calling the game on radio. You might see him on the sideline doing some sideline reporting. You might see him in the stands and every time one of the most friendly guys that you'll come across True. always took the time to say hey just to speak to you and take a couple minutes to talk to you so i know dirk will be missed all right let's get to some interviews here that we uh, talked to this morning we talked to chris mullins of greenham county fred ray of fairview and tony love of ashland How's the energy been at practice the last few days? It's been awesome. Uh, it's been awesome from day one because this is the first time really since I've been the head coach we've had so many returning players. We have about over 30 players from last year's team. So we were able to hit the, the ground running first day of practice on the 10th on Friday. And uh, we didn't have to spend so much time with your, your day one stuff, you know, because uh, we reached that much further ahead than we have been in the past. And so everyone's been excited to kind of get out and get started and kind of prove what they can do. You've had last two years, 12 games inside of by single digits, 11 by less than a touchdown, but you won three of them last year. How does this team make that next step this year and then turn those, turn those into Ws? Well, it's all about the mentality of your program. And when we took over, we, we, it's hard to, to change a losing mentality. And these guys have been winners really all the way up through JFL. So this group of guys expects to win. And that's one of the biggest differences is that they expect to win those games. And that's a really hard thing to teach. That's really, you know, it's a, it's a confidence thing and it's kind of what they're used to doing. And one of our big changes from a coaching staff perspective this year is we're going to coach to win. I mean, that's the bottom line. That's why we're here. That's why they make all these sacrifices out here. So it's on us to make sure that we're doing everything we can to coach to win those games and make sure that, that we come out and get the results that, that they deserve. How are the numbers going for you, Coach? How, how many numbers do you see coming out of practice so far? I definitely, you know, we're going to be in, we're in the 30s. Uh, that's about right for us. Um, maybe have a few here and there once we get the you know, freshman enrollment, things like that. But the numbers are where I expect it to be. You got a lot of still got a lot of playmakers on office come back, coach. Still got Antoine to come back and the regulars. What, what's it like to to coach those the playmakers on offense? I tell you what, it's uh, this second year going to, in terms of offensively, it's been a lot smoother than it was this time last year. So uh, hopefully the transition is a lot faster. We'll be more further along than we were offensively at this time. So uh, having those guys back like Alex and Ruggles and Antoine, those guys is a big help for us this year. Has Alex grown any more over the offseason? Uh, he's, he's, he's gained more weight and he's got a lot stronger. So uh, that's a good thing for us. Um, so definitely that way, yeah. So you have a lot of tests on your schedule, Coach. You got Hazard and Lawrence. And also I saw the old district foe back, LCA. Was that planned maybe to give yourself some early tests for that district? De right. Definitely. I think it just gives us an early test, kind of build us. You know, my philosophy is kind of build us for, you know, past the regular season in the playoff, you know, kind of build our team momentum towards that and just kind of get us ready for a playoff run. You know, Raceland and Painter kind of got a lot of exposure over the offseason, you know, recent championships and Kay Daniel. Do you kind of feel like you're flying under the radar and do you prefer it that way? I prefer it that way. That's kind of just kind of leave us in the back burner, don't know much about us, and hopefully you can sneak up on some people. 
in the last two years, we started from scratch with our offensive line and a lot of guys defensively. And, you know, we've kind of found surprises here and there. Um, and so, you know, we're excited that that's going to be a little different for us this year. And uh, the depth wise, you know, we've got some young guys we're trying to build in there. Uh, it's important that early in the season, you know, when it's hot, that, that we rotate those young guys in and get them some meaningful minutes. So that's what we're looking to do. Well, Hunter Prince graduated, Coach. Who do you see uh, maybe taking uh, taking the job under center for you? <laughs> I, a lot of people have asked that question. Yeah. It's up in the air right now. Mm -hmm. You know, we've got a competitive battle going on between you know, Noah Roberts and Tate Dowdy. Uh, they're both competing. We went down to passing stream at KCU Friday and another one at Moorhead Saturday. And uh, saw a lot of improvement. Uh, they both have certain qualities that can help us. All right, here with Drew O'Brien of the Ashland Tomcats. Uh, Drew, uh, busy off season for you. He just committed to Western Kentucky. Can you tell us about that decision? How excited are you to be a Hilltopper? I'm fired up. Uh, me and Quentin, we're always talking about rooming together, and now it's kind of the other way. I got to play against him for four years, so. But I'm fired up. I love it down there, and I've always been a Hilltopper fan, so I'm fired up to play for Coach Brown. Playing against Quentin Baker, what's that going to be like? How tough is it going to be to tackle him? I'm sure you haven't practiced a couple times. We never get to go against each other, honestly, because of all the rivalry and stuff. But uh, I think it'll be fun. So you think you can catch him? him? Uh, I don't know about that, but when I catch him, I hope I'm good. But I'm about to catch him at an angle. <laughs> this season, you guys have a lot to look forward to, don't you? Um, a lot of guys back. Uh, you're going into your senior year. How much were you looking forward to, you know, this time right now, this summer football practice? I know it's hot out here, but. You know, how much were you looking forward to this time and getting ready, prepared, and amped up for this season? See, the grind hasn't stopped for our seniors. Right after season last year, we got with Coach Taggett. We've been working this whole time, and we're all set on that one goal this year. It feels different than the last couple of years for my varsity career, so I feel like we're all sold in for the right prize this year, so we're really excited. You got the realignment, which takes uh, yeah, Highlands, Highlands Cup Cat Cup out of the equation. Johnson Central's still there, though, and that's a district rival, has been for years now. Um, you know, you tell me the goal, the goal is probably to win that district title and even further, is it? Yes, sir. Try to beat them twice at Putnam. That'd be a dream come true for my senior year. And, you know, just the last season at uh, Putnam Stadium for you, I know that's always a special place, and everyone that has played there has special memories of it. Right. How much are you going to relish this last season and embrace that? I don't like thinking about it. I just kind of want to play it and let it come as it goes. I don't want to think about last season. Kind of bittersweet leaving Putnam Stadium, so kind of play for dirt this year, so we're all kind of set for that. And that's, that's the last thing I was going to ask you about, uh, the passing of Dirk Payne. Uh, we just mentioned it here on the show. Uh, Dirk is so beloved around here. Um, what does it mean to you guys to to play for him and play for his memory? Well, me and Quentin both and Taylor have been really close to Dirk for a while now, and uh, just the definition of a Tomcat and what it means to be and fight for Tomcat pride, and it just sets another whole tempo to our, our team this year, so it's going to be a big help. What's the strong point of this team, you think? Uh, I can honestly say our O-line this year. It's not been like that in the past, but with Jackson Pruitt coming back as big as he is and Taylor Broughton's come a long way and we're going to be really good. So kind of keep guys off Quentin, throw it a little bit. Tate's come up a little bit, so Tate's fighting. So we like it. All right, Drew, thanks a lot. Thanks for having me. All right, back here on HTPT here at Ashland Blazers baseball field where Tony Love and company just wrapped up practice here on Monday morning. Uh, it's, you know, the sweat's pouring off the guys, as you just saw Drew O'Brien here. The sweat's pouring off me, too. I haven't done anything. <laughs> Wild. <laughs> um, a lot of blood, sweat, and tears going into practice this summer in preparation to the for the 2015 season. Man, a lot to look forward to. First, got to start off with Mr. Football Candidates. We have two in the area. Quentin Baker of Ashland, Cash Daniel of Paintsville. Who's going to be Mr. Football by the end of the year? Who has the best chance of those two guys? I think Paintsville's going to have to to make a, a more of a run in the playoffs than they have the last couple of years. We were talking Graceland's not come out of the playoffs the last two years, and uh, we fully expect to see them play probably twice again uh, this year. And Paintsville will, will need to uh, to make some noise deep into the playoffs because Daniel, for all his recruitment, his name is not quite out there on the level. I think that Quentin Baker's is yet. Um, both of those teams will have to make a run in the playoffs, and both of them are capable of that. So um, probably Quentin at this stage, but you know it's a long season, and, and both have a shot. I think I think Quentin will see the ball a little more maybe than Cash Daniel and you know even Cash you know we, he's got some exposure this off season. I think Quentin is more of a, a well-known name maybe than Cash Daniel. I know playing for Ashland will will help mm -hmm. Quentin more than the Cash playing for Paintsville. Another question mark is always position battles throughout the summer. Most of the time 
the most talked about position battles involves quarterbacks, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, here at Ashland, it looks like it might be Tate Dowdy's job. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't know. Uh, you know, there are some other guys that will factor into that as well. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I'm sure Tate won't take advantage of that. I mean, he's going to work for it and uh, maybe earn that job. We'll see what happens. But uh, quarterback at Raceland, too, is, is also a question mark. So there's a couple teams right there. We know Fairview's going to have Alex Roy. We know Greenwood County's going to have Jared Hunt. But there are a lot of teams that are still searching for that quarterback. Boyd County will have its third uh, quarterback in three years because it's had two uh, senior starts the last couple of years, third quarterback under John Gillum. Um, you mentioned Greenup. They may have maybe the most solidified uh, quarterback spot in that district along with Johnson Central it brings a, a guy back that they got a lot of time last year so it'll be interesting to see yeah, East Carter will uh, bring in a, a guy that had some time at freshman last year in Hinkle so uh, a lot of different question marks uh, at quarterback certainly in the, in the district and of course you know you mentioned Boyd County that that looks to be Tanner Edmonds job mm -hmm. and uh, Damon Black and Nathaniel Davidson are battling it out at Raceland a couple different styles uh, Davidson, you know, a little more physical. It might run a little bit more with him. Uh, Black, he can throw the ball. He's got a good arm. So we'll see what uh, direction Raceland wants to go. With that three-team district, Matt, they have, uh, just like we talked with Coach Ray earlier, um, you know, an extra slot on the schedule to fill. And they never back down. You know, they have a pretty tough schedule again, once, once again, just like Fairview does too. Yeah, I, Raceland probably don't have a clear-cut quarterback Fairview yet, but uh, you guys are pretty good runners behind whoever whoever takes it over, Carson Christian and Kane Snyder. So I mean, it would be easy to, to ease into that position. We can just turn and hand it off to one of those guys. And Raceland brings four of his five offensive linemen. Yes, too, so offensive yeah. linemen too, of course, yeah. O-line -line, line for Raceland, O-line for Ashland, mm -hmm. both strong. Of course, Johnson Central always just kind of replenishes there. Mm -hmm. They'll be strong to block for Bryce Workman, who's an mm -hmm. electrifying quarterback. Absolutely. Uh, dual threat guy. They didn't throw the ball very often last year because they didn't need to, but when they could, he, he showed some touch and, and a deep ball as well. And then, you know, you look at defensively, uh, Green County strong again, aren't they? I mean, I, you know, and then uh, you look at Johnson Central, their linebackers always know how to tackle well. Uh, Raceland, their solid front seven. Uh, some defensive uh, question marks. Uh, what do you guys think, you know, just as far as maybe Raceland replenishing that secondary that graced the cover of the tab last year? Yeah, no, yeah you replaced three guys off that secondary. That's going to be kind of tough. Yeah, then, Christian's the only guy back. Yeah, but uh, I'm sure they have enough talent to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, Greenup relies on their defense a whole lot. Their offense has struggled at times the last couple of seasons. They've had a little trouble hanging on the ball, but they've been in about every game they've played, with the exception of maybe a couple. But that, 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 that defense really uh, drives them. Mm -hmm. and don't forget Russell, they bring back. They lose a few guys, but they're very stout defensively last year and uh, well coached defensively, yeah. so they, they've got a good idea. Yeah, we've heard Russell good. has quite a, a few numbers coming out for mm -hmm. football this year, is what we've heard. And uh, so a depth should not, maybe not be a problem for them. Right. Yeah, and skill position wise, they bring Nick Conley, one of the best running backs in the area, back, and Jacob McKee at quarterback, who, man, he really set himself apart the last four or five weeks of the season mm -hmm. last year, didn't he? Just Very apart. good uh, game manager a lot of the season, but he was able to come in and uh, he could throw the ball as well. And uh, obviously, in a TJ Maynard offense, if you're the quarterback, you got to be able to run the ball as well in that spread. And uh, he's another kind of a dual threat guy that really came along as a passer. Those guys really have a lot of experience, too. I mean, they, they played on that team for, I mean, Kind of different styles now that uh, TJ is in there, but uh, like Spear, Nick Conley has been playing varsity for the last two years. I think he's only a junior now, right. so he's still got quite a, quite some good time left. So it should be a high-powered offense for us all night. Some continuity, con continuity, uh, you know, blending over from last year to this season. Not a whole lot of off-season coaching changes. Right. Bath County had a coaching change. Uh, aside from them. You know, you don't really see much. Some assistant turnover and things like that, of course, that's every year. There's some <clears throat> some programs around here, like Granite, for example, that had had a lot of turnover in previous years, but Chris Mullins is going to what is fourth or fifth season? Fifth season. Fifth season here, and that's something that Granite's not had in, in quite some time. Uh, just as an example for that, Fred Ray is back for his second year. Uh, Fairview and Mike Sammons is back, but he was an assistant on that staff, so it's really like they never missed a beat. Of course, East Carter ha hired uh, Tim Champlin as a head coach. That was a major coaching change in the area as uh, Zach Moore departed from there. Champlin spent time at Fairview, Greenup County, so he brings some good experience there. Just a lot of work to do at East Carter. No question, and they're, they, moving to that district doesn't do them any favors. They gotta play Johnson Central, they gotta play Ashland. Greenup should begin to continue to improve, so if they win any district games, it will probably be a, an accomplishment of the state forward for those guys. And I like Wes Carter's talent. They have some athletic ability, starting with Braden Brown, and uh, Kevin Brown, once again, will face the issue of depth. But 
right there on the surface, if they don't have any injuries, the Comets could be a pretty good uh, team. The, the Comets open at, at Raceland, mm -hmm. I do believe, on a Saturday, I think. I, I, I have to make sure about that. I think you're that. right about that. So, I mean, yeah, we, all the games are on Friday night, so I mean, it should have a good crowd for that game. It should be an interesting game. It'll be a good one to see. Also, the EKC grid Arama is coming up. Some seven-on-seven -seven passing tournaments. And we'll try to keep you informed the best we can in the independence. So keep an eye on coming uh, newspapers and keep an eye on the website, dailyindependent.com. You're watching us on dailyindependent.com and we're sponsored by Fannin Automotive Family. We're HTPT. We'll be back at kickoff of the season, probably the week leading into opening night, uh, unless we're too just worn out from the tab. <laughs> There's a good chance of that. There's a great happen. chance of that. So you might see us after opening <laughs> night. We'll see how it goes. But uh, thanks for watching. Matt Sparks, Zach Clemmy, Aaron Snyder. We'll see you next time.